There is a war going on in the schools right now, and it's about the theory of evolution. Now, the theory of evolution and the Bible contradict in many ways. Some of these ways have been recognized, while others you might not have thought about before. Not only are the Bible and evolution not compatible, but believing in evolution can actually undermine the Christian gospel. Firstly, I must make it clear that by the theory of evolution, I am not talking about animals changing characteristics, which is simply microevolution. By disagreeing with the theory of evolution, I am disagreeing with the idea that monkeys can change into humans or that any animal for that matter can change into another kind of animal. This is macroevolution that I'm denying. With that being said, I want to start my argument by mentioning that either anybody who agrees or disagrees with evolution must first recognize that they have a worldview. If your worldview is that no god created us, it would make sense for you to have a worldview in which animals can be created from nothing. This would make sense because the preconceived notions that you already have would be illogical. It is illogical to say that God does not exist and that there is no intelligent creative force that created the universe. Living by an illogical worldview would create more illogical theories, such as the theory of evolution. However, for those that are professing Christians and assert that they believe that God exists, we must look at evolution differently. It does not make sense to conclude that we evolved from nothing, that God used evolution to create us, or that animals have ever or will ever change kinds. Logically, there are many reasons why evolution is not proven, but instead of appealing to the lack of fossil evidence, inaccuracies in carbon-14 dating, or the difference between historical and experimental science, I will be explaining to Christians why they should not reconcile the Bible and evolution. There are three main reasons that I will be talking about in this video why evolution and the Bible are incompatible. The first is that the New Testament writers never shove off the book of Genesis as something poetic, but they always took it as something literal. The Bible says in the book of Genesis that God created the world in six literal days and rested on the seventh. There is no sign that these days are not literal. Jesus himself also appealed to the book of Genesis as literal in Matthew 19 4 when he said have you not read that he created them from the beginning male and female very key word there from the beginning not some kind of evolved scum over many years anyway another verse is from 2 Peter 3 4 which says they will say where is this coming he promised ever since our ancestors died everything goes on as it has since the beginning of creation it would be ridiculous to say that god in his revealed word the bible created an inaccurate representation of creation the second reason is that if humans evolve from monkeys at what point were humans made in the image of god in the book of genesis humans have dominion over animals and humans are made in the image of God. If humans evolve over time, do they receive a higher level of being in his image by how much intelligence they have or how much of a conscience they have evolved over time? Time? If this was true, it would contradict the biblical notion that we are all equally made in the image of God. The last and most staggering reason of why evolution and the Bible are not compatible is that if evolution is true, death came before sin. Romans 5.12 states, Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man and death came through sin, and so, death spread to all because all have sinned. Sin literally came into the world through Adam when he sinned in the garden, and if evolution is true, it would mean that everything was dying long before Adam caused death. This would be in direct contradiction with the Bible and would undermine the gospel. If sin did not come through the world through Adam and death through sin, how could we be under sin? If we were not under sin, we would have no need for a savior, and if we didn't need a savior, Jesus wouldn't have died on the cross. But why did Jesus die on the cross? Jesus died because we had no hope. No good work was able to save us from the consequences of sin. The Bible says that God is a righteous judge, and if God works anything like how we would suspect judges work today, then he would not be righteous to say, you do a good thing, you can go free. Imagine if someone went into a courtroom after committing murder and said, 
Judge, I apologize, but trust me, I've volunteered at orphanages for years, and I think you should let me go on this one. Now, if that judge were to let the murderer go after he said that, you would be angry, right? Well, I hope so, but that is your situation if you're not saved, and if you are saved, that was your situation. You were hopeless because of how seriously God takes sin. God says that all liars have their part in a lake of fire, but this is why Jesus came. Jesus was our infinite payment for an infinite debt when we would have had an infinite punishment by an infinite God. But now we can be free because of what he did for us. After dying on the cross, Jesus then rose again from the dead, proving he could defeat death. And the message is for everyone to repent turn from sins and put their faith in Jesus instead of any of their good works. I really hope this video has been a blessing to you guys. If it has been, please consider liking, commenting, subscribing, and sharing to help spread biblical truth and have a God-blessed day.